professionally, I come from an engineering background. So I've studied just mechanical engineering for a while. My family has some kind of tradition in that as well. And I studied computer science and I've worked as an engineer designing things. What we've experienced in WikiLeaks is that there is a big potential for providing whistleblowing services on the internet. So a place where someone that has information but cannot publicly disclose it, where this person can go and leave this information anonymously for someone else to publish it. Quite precisely, this whole concept has such a big potential that at some point in time you will get more information than you can handle. And the question of how to publish a certain information, of where to draw a line between privacy and the public interest, this question becomes very complicated. And it becomes so complicated that me and a few others, we felt it needs a more complex answer than what WikiLeaks can offer. If you get a lot of documents, somebody has to decide where they go. And the easiest and the most just solution, I think, is to leave this up to the source, because the source might know who has an interest. Um, so the source can now say, uh, they give it to a certain NGO, as you suggested, but they can also say how long it remains exclusively with that NGO. With NGOs, this exclusivity is not so important, but it's important with media organizations because every reporter that get in, gets information wants a scoop. This is the economy of how media works. But on the other hand, the source wants maximum distribution. So now they can say that an NGO or somebody else gets it for four weeks, and that's the time they have it exclusively, and that's the time they can make the scoop. Um, and after this four weeks, the document is distributed within the system to the other partners. If you do these kind of publications, the only group that can help you to reach the masses is the media and some very high profile NGOs. So if you, if you involve these people in the publication process, they will make sure that such material gets the proper research, that it gets the proper context, because that is what the press provides you, context. They tell you the full story, they tell you what's around the documents, not just the, the documents, but also what is around them and how you have to put them into a context. And that's really important for people to understand. So with such a publication, I hope that in the future, it would actually be much more effe effective and efficient because people would get the full story around these, this material and not just the material. One of the biggest components that we offer as a project is a knowledge database. This is also what's very time consuming to build at the moment, where we just want to publish all the expertise that we make, legal, especially legal research, but also some technical stuff, so that other projects can build on our expertise. So we're not trying to build a business model here where we're trying to keep the secrets to us so nobody else can come up with a solution. But we are trying to make sure that others can also build good solutions. And then in the end, I think it's always better to have a democratic field with lots of solutions around and people can pick what they think is accurate rather than build, trying to build the biggest empire or something like this. The biggest difference, I think, is that WikiLeaks is a hack. It's a proof of concept. It, it was a great idea that Julian had at some point in time, and it was implemented to see if it just works out. But there is no real underlying design consideration. Um, it was not meant to, to scale. It wasn't, no one thought about how to sustain it for, I don't know, a decade or even longer. How can the project grow? These kind of things have just not been designed into the project.